on stage, same stage with uh, both of these gentlemen. Um, so let's let's jump right into it, man. Let's jump right on into it, man. You guys are brothers, right? And um, you've been making music since the beginning together, right? Who had the interest first to make music? It's older brother, man. It's always, you know, older brother basketball player, the younger is the basketball player, whatever. Like, right, whatever right. your older brother does, you're like, I want to do that, you know? Gotcha. Something like Just that. to clear it, I, I had someone that knows me yesterday say, I thought Mo was your older brother. Really? I'm actually the older brother. Right. So, yeah. Five just, year difference, just too. So I can get the credit for the music stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, but he, he used to rap, he used to sing, produce, all these things. So, when, as a youngin, I'm 10, I'm 12, all I hear is beats and like, you know, you know, crazy music banging out his bedroom and people in and out, and he's producing for this crew and that crew. So, right, like so interested, I wanted to see and I, seeing him at his first show. I was I was backstage like 12 years old, and I was like, it's done. Like it's it's been decided. I'm doing that's, this. That's, yeah, that's your yeah. goal now. Yes, yes. Right, that's dope. That's dope. So um, working together as brothers, how easy or hard has has it been? Because you always would have a sibling rivalry, right? Just in general, just being siblings. So. How easy or hard is it to work with each other? Because you've seen each other grow up, you kind of know each other in and out, you know? Um, I mean, it's not as easy as you want, as you think it can be. And obviously, like, being brothers is sometimes difficult. We also live with each other. We also, like, run a business together, which is harmony. Um, so, luckily, me and Mo sort of, like, align on a lot of things. So, it makes things smoother most of the time. But... Um, there's ups and downs, just like working with any partner in any other field, whether creative or business. There's sometimes it kind of like you guys don't, don't align or don't see face to face. But I think we're really good at letting one of us lead in situations. Like just because I'm older, I don't always consider myself as the leading factor or the person in a situation. Right. Like when I see that Mo is the right person to lead charge in something or he has the right opinion, for, for me it's all about... I always look at a situation, whether with an artist or a business situation, and I see who's more passionate about their opinion. And I believe that you should also f always follow the per that person because they believe in something stronger than you, and you should let them lead in that certain instance. And it's a lot of the times either me or him, and we're really good at taking the back seat in these situations. That's what makes us work well together. I think the, the, like the key factor would be just called building trust in general. Right. So if we trust each other and trust each other's opinions, directions, and it's like... As you said, if you have the passion, I trust you that you're also being logical at the same time and then you're balancing, you know? And then we, we have a lot of debates and well, we have hour long phone conversations like daily, even though we live together, run a business together and then create music together later at night. So it's a very, you know, it's a bond, I think, that we also consult each other in life. So there's a, there's a crazy dimensions to it in terms of our relationship. You it's know also I mean? like important to mention the fact that we're three partners, right? So there is a person right in the middle between me and him who's not one of our brothers. That's why the Harmony Brothers thing kind of like we removed the brothers thing because right. we have Majid with us. Right. So uh, with Majid, uh, he kind of like is, is kind of like the balance between me because me and him could be hot-headed sometimes. So Majid is kind of like the calmer presence right. in the room where he's kind of like he's calming us down. So we have like the three of us, I realize it's more of a mentality and we all do the whole letting the person lead the charge who's right for the situation really well. Right. Yeah. So going, jumping into um, to Harmony, right? What inspired that? Like, uh, can you explain exactly what Harmony is and what inspired Harmony? I get asked this question every day, like what do you guys do? Yeah. Uh, so Harmony in its essence is a music collective and that's how it started and then um three years ago we started having a conversation about moving into a creative agency or a creative consultancy mm -hmm. and um it was kind of like just an idea we had back and forth and then out of nowhere uh, majid said i'm moving to dubai and we're gonna open this thing so basically what we are is is we are a creative consultancy we work with a lot of brands on their creative and social media presence from content creation all the way to strategy mm -hmm. and we do have music as in one of our pillars so we work with a lot of clients on music activations and stuff such as such as ibis hotels or dubai design district or reebok or you know we help them with that kind of stuff but we derive a lot of our creative thinking from music because we th I, in my in my opinion i think the music industry is the most innovative industry that it, ha it had to survive so many things and had to stay creative ahead of the curve right. we do have a lot of um, 
the non-conventional, non-music clients like government. In fact, like in Saudi right now, we have MISC and we have uh, the Sport Authority and we have NEOM. And so we have all these clients that are super government, but uh, we kind of live in a very interesting era where what we did in terms of culture is very important to all these faculties and all these companies because they see that you are you understand culture because of your understanding of music. Right. So that's what allowed us to build something from a music collective all the way to like a business entity that is a creative agency. I feel like um, years ago we realized we were marketing a product that's digital, doesn't exist, and we were building brands, communities, fans around our artistry, right? Whether it's A.Y., Majid, you know, Hamza Housawi. We worked with a lot of artists along the way, and we figured out that, okay, we're learning how to market a digital product that you have to pay for or pay for a service to get. So we're actually, you know, in, in the business, in the industry here. Right. And we, we started to understand, okay, well, look at this brand. They're trying to make communities, and they're trying to, to become more of a lifestyle, like an off-white or whatever it may be. And all brands are trying to get there. So now we understand that the music relates a lot to the way you are marketing brands these days. So right. that was the connection that I feel like was a, was a epiphany that we had. Like, okay, yeah. we can apply all of this to all of this and then end up getting real dollars. Yeah, because we realized that we need, there is the need for people like us in those buildings sometimes to kind of make sure that the translation of what's happening to a younger generation and what the board members are talking about there's such a disconnect sometimes because the region has an extremely young generation. So it's super young and then people who sit in boardrooms and companies and entities are much older. Specifically, especially in Saudi, for example. It's a really young generation. So we felt like we could walk in there, we speak the, we speak the language of artists and creatives and etc. and the young generation and at the same time we all have business degrees we've all worked in amazing companies so we know how to talk to the business entities and kind of explain how their interests financially aligns with what's happening in the culture on a, on a smaller yeah. scale basically right yeah and in a like genuine way like we see people trying to portray culture and it's the most you know inauthentic and just like right. cheesy cornball way and you know, you just need one person on your team that gets culture. Trust him, listen to him, especially when now you're incorporating music and influencership into your brand, Excuses you know, identity. French. Right. Huh? What, what was that? You said that. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just like, as you said, connecting the dots between marketing, branding, and, right. and how we can move forward. So how are you staying ahead of the curve? Because there's other, um, you know, influencers in the region, there's other people that's trying to do that. How, how are you using your brand to stay ahead of the curve? That's an interesting question. That We should ask, you know, ourselves that in our, ourselves. Next, in our next weekly meeting and just, like, yeah. figure it out. But uh, I mean, you're, you're doing an amazing job. Like, I see what you're doing um, on social media. I've seen what you guys are doing in live. Like, I, I stopped into a few events that you guys have been a part of, and that's been amazing. Like, I've, everything that I've seen has been great. So how are you keeping? I think I have the answer. Is basically we're, we're working on our own IP, and most times we get to test and, and do things, you know, before we preach them. So we, ha we actually get to try things, whether it's, you know, as we said, marketing music or whether AY now is working on marketing his beat packs and his sample packs that now we're understanding how to digitally, you know, be ahead of the curve. So it's us trying, figuring out how things work and how we can actually bring value to anybody else right. before we take it out. We're not preaching things that we don't try ourselves on our own brands right. and maybe lose money on figuring out through R&D. We're not just preaching things that we think we know. We're actually trying things. So going back, let's go back to your backgrounds. Um, you mentioned earlier that you guys work at amazing um, companies. You know, as the DJ, how what, what has been your schooling? You know, uh, uh, background, I guess, in, in education. Um, I mean, I'm business business administration, marketing graduate. I actually studied in AUD, so I've been in Dubai for that long. Mo is also an American University graduate. AY is ex Havas, and most of most important of all in terms of the business, Majid was extremely knowledgeable in strategy, social, right. digital. So when he brought his knowledge to the, to, the, to the table, I think he was very valuable in terms of actually making it a business. We, we, ha we are very creative, but we, are, we didn't have the strategy, I believe. I come from more of a 
like old school advertising background because I worked on like I was in the client servicing team of like old school TVC radio C world. Majid was uh, working in uh, more of the influencer marketing and the social world. So he had a lot more experience when it came down. And when we connected the dots between those two things, we kind of understood that it's all one of the same. And I was literally mentored by these guys. So when I came in, I didn't have so much experience. I was soaking up from, from them because they had a lot of experience. And I was just learning along the way. But the way I work is I try to, you know, take, take responsibility quickly. So I was able to grasp some knowledge, take projects of my own. And within like 12 to 18 months, I was able to catch up kind of thing. But... Yeah, they had a lot of the knowledge and experience that led us to be in a business in reality. Right. Now, how, do you, how was your experience working with brands um, in the region? Like, you guys work with a several brands, right? Um, how has your experience been? How difficult has it been for somebody who has not had that? You know, somebody's looking to, to come in the game. How difficult is, is it for them? I mean, brands are focused on the bottom line. Right, and that's it is what it is, you know, and, and I think that's the most difficult thing going from when you're well, a lot of the things that we pitch or talk about the brands is very long term, them understanding that they need to build towards things like luckily we have uh, Dubai design district who says, go on, do this thing for three years or four years in a row. We believe in you guys. We think you guys will build it to become something that's great. Um, a lot of the times other brands have more of short term vision in terms of what they do. So it's always about you taking a step back and understanding what the brand needs and you're, if you're able to kind of connect the dots for them. And it's not always, the answer is not always culture and right. you have to know what the brand's looking for. Certain brands are interested in those things like for example, a brand like Puma is super interested in, in building culture and doing things that are kind of like off key but necessarily do they want to spend a lot. But a brand like Nike is kind of like not too interested sometimes, but now they're starting to get interested. It's all about looking at the brand and winning the trust of the brand slowly for you to be able to do whatever you want to do with them and, and, and understanding that at the end of the day, the bottom line is very important for them. So can you drive... Um, can you drive finances for them? Can you actually bring in results? If you, if you can connect the dot between culture and results to them and you can bring it to the table, I think you can get anyone to do anything. But it, it's, it's up and down, to be honest. Just to, to kind of give you like a general view, it's so hard sometimes to get them to believe in forward-thinking things that we've been preaching playlists as a simple form of marketing and culture building for three years plus. But like, it's just very hard, as I am said, to build something with them it's like it's mostly a short term like we want to sell this jacket right here <laughs> like right. now and, and and that's not how it works in reality you know what i mean so is, is harmony a global collective is, is that the focus like going to the future or you guys want to mainly uh, look at this region and kind of just work within this i don't think we ever looked at one region and said that's kind of the home because we're right. children of the internet at the end of the day like True. i connect with a guy and i have friends in atlanta right now that i talk to that are producers or creatives or whatever and we kind of speak the same language and think about the same things and i have friends in saudi that do the same thing so i don't think in physical format as a company we're kind of regional right now right. but we do have aspirations for us to be everywhere and we do have a lot of different faculties and things that we do there's the there's obviously this, the sound design aspect of stuff that we do, which is Harmony Lab, which we launched this year. It's kind of a, it's a digital collective of different producers that are around the world. Right. And then, you know, the agency is here as, as an office in Dubai and an office in Riyadh. And whatever we do next will be in different places. And I think we believe that culture is kind of interconnected these days. Kids speak the same thing. The gen young generation kind of connects on a much deeper level than anyone thinks. So... Yeah. So I feel like we're looking forward to exporting culture mm -hmm. and we want to become a hub where we are able to, you know, be called by South by Southwest right. to come out instead of Soul DXB bringing people from right, right. Netherlands here. So it's like we want to flip that. We want to become a part of that story, the global story as well. We import so much culture that we, we want to build uh, things that can go places from here. Right, and, and essentially you guys are forerunners in that already, just based on what you guys did with Spotify, with, I am, with the I Am I'm Band the band. program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, how did that work out for you, like in regards to your global awareness for your brand? That was the introduction to, yeah, like that was the introduction to streaming and, and globalization of 
how we're going to start marketing our music. It's no longer here or there, it's everywhere. Right. And, uh, you know, that was before we even had Spotify here, where you had to go on Jerry cards or whatever and buy a $60 thing. And then, so uh, that was the introduction to, to start thinking that way. And then three years later, now we're, we're, we're in that mindset, building IP uh, that we can export to the world instead of just, you know, following suit because it's always what we do any tv program or whatever it may be is always an english you know is a translation of some other other stuff right. and we want to stop that in some degree yeah like what we learned from that experience is that there were there was a global organization trying to export the story from the region mm -hmm. but the center focus of our story is arabs is always there's a negative annotation to it and i think arabs are cool i think arabs are super creative i think we're great like there's a, there's a focus on the negative aspects of things that are in our culture or happening in our world too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The first question we got asked in New York, we were doing a panel, and they're like, so how do you feel as an Arab artist? Or how do you feel as an Arab producer? And what are your dreams as an Arab artist? And it's, it's funny to me when they say that because th the essence of it is I'm an artist. Or he's an artist, right? The Arab part it means nothing. Like, it's our identity. It's not my artistry. So right. what we said was that we want to make sure that the Syrian kids that were living in New York at that time that just moved there understand that it's cool for them to be artists and creatives. It's like the unboxing. So I, I, my answer was that my dream is I want to win a Grammy, just like any other producer or artist in anywhere in the world. Right, so it's like the what we're trying to do is unbox our culture in a way that we help the world understand that we're just regular creatives, just like from anyone else. And, and we're just one of hundreds of people right now. The, the diaspora of Arabs has become extremely active in the creative community, and you can see it. And uh, the idea is not just the for the people who are living on foreign grounds get to be cool like that. We get to be cool like that. I've never lived in the States, Canada, none of that. I lived in Saudi Arabia and the UAE my entire life, but I can be that. I can be whatever I want to be. Right. And that's just, the, as I am said, unboxing that for our culture, basically. Right. And, and right now, I think it's easier than ever with the, with the internet. You know, you can unbox culture. You can kind of showcase what your talents are. Um, just in shortage of time, I ask one, uh, one last question. What would be your advice? to someone who wants to kind of uh, uh, another um, creative in general um, within a region, how do you tackle this particular market the way that you have, you know, with the things that you've done, working with brands, um, working in the in entertainment industry, yeah. being signed to labels? Execute, don't wait for a brief. Don't go after them, let them come after you. The, we started our company from a party. Our party was cool. Brands were talking to us, who's doing your creatives, who's doing whatever. It started that. So basically, if you're going to sell something or you're going to say that you have a product, execute it. Put your money where your mouth is. Really put the time in and look at yourself as a startup. A lot of the creative world has not jumped into the startup mentality yet, which is very important. You know, you got to dedicate, you got to experiment, you got to execute, and you got to put your product out into the world. Don't be scared. I, f I see a lot of creatives and artists and whatever. They're always holding on to their creations so near and dear that they don't let the world know that it exists. Like they're giving away a lot of opportunity by not showcasing what they have. And I think the most important thing is for you to execute, showcase, and do it quickly and abruptly. Efficiently, for yeah. sure. I, I would have two answers. Like in a business sense, you know, you have to struggle. Mm -hmm. And... Me, Aham, and, and Majid, we actually did, like, th these guys left high paying jobs to get paid nothing for 12 months to build this brand. But this is called sweat equity. You have to be ready for that um, business wise. Uh, other than that, in terms of artistry, Aham said it best, you know, execute, showcase. And for me as an artist, a piece of advice, stop with your comments and your notes that no one's gonna, you know, realize. No one's gonna pick up on that little thing. Stop holding your releases back. Stop holding yourself back. Right. You know, they tell you four weeks and you wanna do two weeks, do two weeks. Do whatever you feels right. You know your fan base, trust yourself. Right. You know, a lot of people are sitting waiting for their friend to tell them, yo, drop that. No, just just drop it, you know Disconnect what I mean? Disconnect yourself from the, go from the goals and connect more with the process. Gary said it best, right? As soon as any, yeah, any compliment, doesn't even you know phase you doesn't even make you feel it just phase out the compliments and the 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 criticism and then you'll be all right just keep working 
right, right. Is there any questions from the audience? Anybody in the audience have any questions? Yeah. Shade. Uh, everybody in the audience and all their friends, um, you see how uh, in Atlanta they say that's our artist, that's guy from that's from Atlanta. Like we need to stream him, view his video, buy his merch, sell everything out. We need to have the same passion. That support. That's it. I have more. You know, I see people have more passion in, in, uh, for a Toronto artist than they do for a freak. Where freak should be our hometown hero. Right. And and this is exactly what we need to start building. We as an audience need to be fans of Arab creatives, buy their stuff and and you know send them. A PayPal, you know what I mean? If you have to, these guys need to survive. Right. I mean, that's something that I'm actually starting with uh, Audio Swim uh, uh, is equity crowdfunding for artists, independent artists, because that's one of the things that I've seen that in, that artists need here is investment. Everybody's looking for investment. As an artist, as a creative, you can't spend time looking for money if you're going to create the product. You're going to need somebody to believe in your story, believe in your uh, your vision. So um, that's one of the goals. But uh, um, any other questions before we? We have to uh, call this one. Everybody good? Well, I'm honored to be on the stage with you too, man, for real. I appreciate you. You're appreciate always supporting you. culture and doing your thing, and we appreciate your presence. Thank you for team, building man. a platform. Thank yeah. you. Thank it's you. it's, for it's, more, it's as important as the artists. Build platforms, please. Please. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being a part of it.